getting ready for temperatures to drop, aren't we? Yes. It was like sweaty warm in the house yesterday, this morning, but it is gonna plunge every hour. It's gonna plunge a few degrees until it plunges us down to like 17 or 15 degrees. Yikes. It normally doesn't really get that cold in Dallas, Texas, but we're also gonna get some snow, which the kids are excited about. So here we go. Let's get this homestead ready. Ready? I'm not sure he's ready. <laughs> For snow, it'll be fun. <laughs> Scratch for the chickens. Scratches, yummy treat for the chickens that has corn in it. They love it and you only give it to them in the cool weather, here in Dallas, Texas at least. I don't know about other places because it can get a little bit too heavy, I guess, for them in the heat in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Rocket. There you go, that's right. <laughs> Get after those girls. That's what you're here for. <laughs> they still get their fermented feed. <clears throat> I do a couple of feeding stations to keep down the fighting. <clears throat> I'll probably put this in their coop though when it freezes so that it won't freeze. But right now we can leave it out. You might be wondering, why is she using fermented chicken feed? And how does she make it? So when I mix it up in a few days, I'm almost out. So when I mix it up in a few days, I will take you guys along. So watch for a video for that. <laughs> now it's the rabbit's turn. Hey, hi. She is not pregnant. I know in the last video, I put her and the buck in together here thinking that she had her babies in this nice kind of coop it's a chicken coop but she would dig holes and kind of have a nice sheltered place and they might do better having babies in the winter but <clears throat> no she didn't get pregnant so oh well <laughs> made me spill it Rabbits do really well in the cold because their coats are made for that. Now he's working on a bone. Is it good? She loves the cold weather. Okay, you guys, I have way too many rabbits. The reason is I kept three bucks because I want to keep one of the bucks so I want to raise them up and see their personalities. The reason I'm keeping a buck is because Buddy's getting older. I'm thinking maybe that's why litters are smaller. So I love Buddy. He, I'm gonna have to check his pedigree, see how old he is. I can't remember, I think he's about six. I think he's about six. So, so I kept three bucks and I have chosen one by eliminating the other two. Let me show you what, why I'm not keeping this one. He is a food spiller. See if I can get a shot under 
the hutch. Look at all that food, you guys. You are a food smeller. Yeah, you're cute, but you gotta go. <laughs> so anyone is interested in some Champagne de Argent, Argent box, let me know in the <laughs> let me know in the comments and I'll contact you. <clears throat> yep, there's my food spiller. Got to go. Now watch closely on this one and you'll see why I don't keep him. Or why I don't want to keep him. What wait for it? Wait for it. Come on. Do it. I know you want to. Not He's not gonna do it. He is a chewer. <laughs> so look. Chewed. <laughs> Chewed. Let's see. Chewed. <laughs> Chewed. We can look at that. That yeah. used to be a board. Chewed. Yes. <laughs> there he goes. Okay. He just did it for a second. Yeah. He, oh, see, he's trying to reach even that fence I put against to shelter him. Yep. He's a chewer. He got to go. So this is the buck I decided to keep. He's pretty calm. Aren't ya? He's not a chewer or a food dumper. He's a pretty sweet guy. Kind of like his papa. <laughs> like his papa, right? We're pretty chill. I'll have to name him, you guys. I don't know, they all look very much alike, so what should I name him? Perfect. Leave your ideas in the comments. <laughs> Last time I'll run the hose in a while. I'll have to cart water out here. And unfreeze water crocs. Ugh. Getting a little help cleaning out the gutters before the storm. Well, it's cold outside. I'm going to be starting my tomatoes inside. <laughs> All right, fill up my trays and take them inside. fish ponds I got for my birthday in the summer but I don't want my fish to freeze so my friend loaned me this so that's awesome Just gonna rig it up like that okay and plug it in can't really see the fish right now because it's so messy because I was just cleaning off the patio they're in there So cool. Coming up for food. <laughs> Fortunately, I have this partially composted compost with shredded leaves and stuff, stuff from the horse barn. So I am gonna fill it up and this is what I'm gonna put on my veggies to protect them. Also frost cloth, but you'll see. <sighs> Kale is a pretty hardy crop, but I don't know, 15 degrees is very cold. So we're gonna give it some mulch. Kinda cover it up. Under its frost blanket. <laughs> Hopefully it survives, you guys. out 
and uncover it when the old time is over. I'm going to harvest a lot of this Swiss chard to eat inside and put in soups in our toasty warm house because it will probably get frozen quite a bit. The frost will nip it, so might as well just enjoy it. You guys, I got some new mittens for the cold front that's coming in. So fingerless, and then they're not fingerless anymore. Ooh. Yeah, so this should be warm. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want some good homesteading fingerless but not fingerless gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, snow. I'm getting my garden workout because this is the tenth load I've done. They're not that heavy, but definitely a lot of walking back and forth. Because my garden is in the front yard. So it is very true, if you've ever heard before, put your compost near your garden, that's why. But since mine is in the front yard, I don't think they'd like me having a big compost area there. And my chickens wouldn't be able to scratch through it like they do. They wouldn't be able to work it over for me. Thank you, girls. I bought this frost paw off the internet. It's Dewitt. I'll leave a link in the description for it. It is one, 1.5 ounce weight. So that has been the tricky thing with getting cloth off the inter internet. It's, it's hard to tell what the weight is. So let's see how this turned out. And I got it 10 by 12 to go over the whole, like the archways, because the bed is four, four by eight. So you have to have extra to go over the edges. Okay, it's a good thick one. That's good because it'll last then for several winters. Yay, yes. Okay, can you help me put it on, Eli? Yep. Is it twisted? <laughs> fit here so I'm glad I can still use it
forgot to show you guys that I'm covering up my garlic because, well, garlic likes cool weather and this is the way we grow it in Texas during the winter. It doesn't like like 15 degrees and sleet, <laughs> like I sleet. And these are calendula flowers. They're pretty delicate. So I'm gonna cover these two. It's better if the frost cloth doesn't touch the plants, but yeah, these are harder to hoop than the other ones. So I didn't put hoops on these. Okay. And I started to plant my little onions the other day and then I realized it was gonna be super, super cold. So we're just gonna cover them too. I covered them with the mulch and then we're gonna cover them with the some tablecloths, old tablecloths. Hope you make it, babies. Oh. Rosie is feeling very green today. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> we have green stockings even. You are feeling green all the way to the core. So obviously I need to, it worked for this bed, the piece I got, but obviously I need to get a bigger piece to cover these hoops or make the hoops smaller. I've thought about that before making kind of a square, more of a square hoop with some angled PVC to make it a little shorter so that I don't have to get as much frost cloth. Okay, I think we're ready for winter. We're ready for this big storm coming. Wish us luck wherever you are. I hope you are having fun, fun in the snow, but not, you know, having damage in the snow or your electricity going out or something. I hope you're having fun in a winter wonderland. <laughs> Bye guys. We have an awesome recipe. Again, it's from Southern Keto Cookbook. Still on the keto diet, which basically means no carbs, no sugar. <laughs> so spaghetti squash is the base and then you make like a sloppy joe mix to put on top of it. So Rosie's gonna cook. My beautiful daughter's gonna cook. So first of all, this is the trick, is to poke holes in it and then see what we do with it That'd to be. make it easier to cut because I almost cut my finger off usually when I'm trying to get through this hard spaghetti squash and cut it in half. Yeah, just holes on either side, yeah. Just to let the steam out so it doesn't explode. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh gosh, you're getting into that. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's enough holes already. Okay. Okay. Okay, for seven minutes. <laughs> Goodbye. My eyes. Mother, my eyes. Are you crying? I'm crying so much. Are you crying? <laughs> oh, no. I patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that didn't go slant. <laughs> the chefs make it look easy, don't they? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna see if it's easier to cut after being in the microwave for seven minutes. <laughs> I guess put the tip in first. That's what I did and it wasn't easy. Like, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay, wow. Does not appear to be easier. Okay, well, I thought it was gonna be easy. I thought that was the, like her trick. All right, well, that was a fail. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> okay, we tried it with a sharp knife. Maybe it was just, I haven't sharpened that knife in a long time. Oh no. <gasps> it's working. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> That's kind of Hey, fun. stop playing with your food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Oh. 
Oops. Yay! Sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's okay. Oh yeah, it didn't go perfectly, but that's okay. Nothing we do is perfect on the homestead, is it? <laughs> we always have some sort of chunk out of our project. Or yeah, you take the seeds out? Yeah, take the seeds out. Probably want to get a spoon. We would put parchment paper down like you're, like it says to, but like that's all that was left on the roll, so. Oh well. Oh well. All swell the ten swell. <laughs> Amen. Okay, drizzle it with some olive oil. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> This is a generous drizzle. It just comes out fast. Okay, salt. Okay. Cooking lessons, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, you like your black pepper, do ya? I do, I do. Oh. I just like, don't you sneeze? <laughs> oh, don't sneeze on my food. It's just like in Alice in Wonderland. Okay. What next? So, Rosie, it, share with them what part are you playing in Alice in Wonderland? The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, yes. <laughs> so, our newest play. All right. <laughs> no drama here in this apartment. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, into the oven for 45 minutes at 400. Sideways or this way? Uh, either way. Sideways. Good idea. Ooh, One medium bell pepper. Satisfying. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, and then you said dice it? Yes. Tomato paste. Oh no. I know you guys can't smell this, and I'm sorry, but it smells really good. <laughs> mm. All right, and let that cook, cook to mingle all the flavors together. While our spaghetti squash bakes in the day. oven. Or a good morning, wherever you are. All the love, all the power. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's why they call it spaghetti squash, huh? Oh my gosh, look at that. Look, look. Spaghetti. Yes! Oh, that's exciting. I got it, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oh, that yeah, looks yummy. It does look good. How much do you put on? However much you want. And can I get, I'm gonna put some cheese on. Oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> Yum. Woo! <-wee. laughs> look what we made! Yes! <laughs> Open face sloppy joes. <laughs> With spaghetti squash. Yum. Well, the winter storm did not disappoint. <laughs> it is cold out here. 
And this is what we're most famous for in Dallas, Texas. I'll show you. Not really snow. Doesn't snow very often, but ice. Covering all the limbs. Makes them heavy. Sometimes it makes them snap off. So yeah, there will be a lot of that this weekend or this week. <laughs> the latch was frozen shut. I had to pour water over it just to get in, in the chicken yard. And the chickens have not yet ventured out. <laughs> I just gave them some water. I couldn't find the tarp to go over the whole thing. I usually tarp it. I couldn't find it. I think one of my boys borrowed it for camping. So I've got a smaller tarp. I'm gonna give that a try. But my camera does not like being out here in the cold very long, so what do you think? What do you think, huh? <laughs> I know. It was just 70 yesterday. I know. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's get these girls fixed up. <laughs> Definitely harder to homestead in this. Oh my goodness, it takes a long time to get those water crocs thawed out and fresh water. And these these lids got really heavy with the snow, so it was a workout just getting them open. But everybody settled in. <sighs> it was hard to film at the same time as doing it, so I had to put the camera inside. Let me show you how I did the chickens. Got it all covered with a tarp. That was not easy. Two tarps. <laughs> that was not easy. I really wish I'd done that yesterday. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and everybody's pretty cozy. I got a light in there with that. And it's not a heat lamp, but it's an incandescent bulb. So it does put off some heat. So got their foods under it so it won't freeze. And their water so it won't freeze. They're kicking stuff into it though, but. Okay, I'll change it later. All right, girls. Good luck. <laughs> and boy. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. Stay warm. As I've said in other videos, our hutches, most of our chicken hutches are meant for ventilation for the summer heat. So they are not meant for this cold weather. Oh, man. Brr, I'm going inside where it's warm. Bye, you guys. I put her in this cage because I thought she might get pregnant, you know, and I thought it'd be more sheltered, but look how much ice and snow got in there. So definitely note to self, I mean, she can still, there's plenty of room under there for her to get out of it. But note to self, maybe board this side up <laughs> during the winter. So the north wind at least will have a block. <laughs> Sir, tread carefully. Do you hear the crunch? Yes, it's thin ice. Going out to play in the snow. We don't get <laughs> snow here in Dallas, Texas very often. So we're going to love every minute of it. There's the garden all tucked in. <laughs> wow. Cracking. The ice is cracking. Is it? Run. Don't fall into the ice. Woo! Oh, it's <laughs> I'm hoping that my bees are okay in there. Normally a beekeeper would go in and see how much sugar they had, you know, see how much honey they had actually. So they would know whether we need to feed them or not. But I didn't do that. So as soon as it warms up, I will feed them, but I hope they make it through this cold spell. It's just a few days, so hope they can pull through. They're still in this little temporary hive because I'll show you. Wow, we never get snow like this. This is fun. <laughs> They're supposed to be all nestled in this hive, but I wanted to make an improvement on this hive. I wanted to cut out a 
section here in the box for a feeder to go in so I could feed them from the outside of the hive instead of putting food down in the hive. So that has not happened. I was kind of waiting for my brother-in-law to help me and you know, he is he's a busy man, many responsibilities, so we never got that done. So I didn't get it transferred um, from the little box over there to this beautiful hive. So I regret that now and I hope that they make it. Hey you guys, I am getting the rabbits fresh water and everyone feeding the chickens. Their water was completely frozen so, but I wanted to tell you like, why am I dressed this way? <laughs> I'm doing cold therapy. Um, what I do is I take a cold shower every morning, so this morning I'm just going outside and set while I do the animals. <laughs> now you might think, she is crazy. Well, yeah, I never claim to be sane uh, over and over on this pod, on this um, vlog, garden vlog. I never say, yeah, I'm perfectly sane. Now I'm a little, I mean, how boring would that be, right? But yeah, I got this idea from, of course, Wim Hof, the Iceman. And so why would somebody do this? There goes that better. So why would someone do this? Uh, by the way, you might be saying, well, it's Texas, it's not that cold. Well, it's 19 degrees, so that was pretty cold. <laughs> So, why would someone do this? Well, because, like, if you can make yourself step into a cold shower, you can approach, like, a crowd of people and start getting anxious, and then just step into the situation. You can approach telling someone about their savior, and start to get anxious about it, and then just make yourself step into the situation. You can make yourself step into uncomfortable things, um, and, survive and know that you're okay and yeah that's kind of so it reduces anxiety i think also it reduces inflammation it's really good for your health so yep that's why i'm doing it i'm whim hopping <laughs> honestly i wish it was like this more a little bit for this aspect of it because this is easier than stepping into a cold shower to me but i thought about getting a water trough maybe next year Maybe next winter, that'll be <laughs> our Wim Hof method. We'll see. All right. <sighs> One more frozen water to go. So seeing away this cold gives us our mind an opportunity to test what we can handle and yeah, shake our fears and test, um, use stress in a good way to teach us that we can handle my way, way more than we think we can. Hey you guys, as this winter storm is outside, I'm in my cozy house starting my seeds for peppers and tomatoes. It's time to get thinking about those. You're supposed to do them in January here in Dallas, Texas, but I'm a little bit late, but that's okay. I'm doing two things different this year. I am gonna use a heat mat for the first time. A friend of mine convinced me to go ahead and try it. He said that even though it's Dallas, Texas and the winters aren't that severe, you'll be surprised at how fast, how much faster your peppers and tomatoes come up because they can take a while to come up. So I'm gonna give it a try. I'll let you guys know how it goes. And then the other change I'm making is I am not doing hot peppers this year. I know. Although hot peppers do so well here, I want to concentrate on ones that I, ones that I can eat, that I can use in my cooking, that I can really enjoy. So we're going to do more of these. And then I think it'll be enough to do one Caribbean habanero plant to make my hot sauce, my peach habanero sauce at the end of the year. So I'm not doing them this year. I'm just going to pick that plant up at the feed store and just do one and make hot sauce from that. So my tomatoes, let's see the kinds I'm doing. Uh, got some container varieties. Let's see, 
this Roma and this Tasmanian chocolate. So I'm doing some in containers and even in the garden bed, but they just stay a little smaller. So hopefully I can shade them a little bit easier and extend my season. And don't forget your ground cherries. I will never have my garden without ground cherries. It's such a fun thing for the kids to run out and, and pop in their mouths. They love it. I love it. Morning breakfast. <laughs> a sweet morning breakfast. And then I'm doing, of course, cherries. Again, the kids love it. Sunrise bumblebee and garden candy. So those are, I'm trying one new one this year. It's called Crimson Carmelo supposed to be a really prolific one. It's a little bigger. Has it supposed to have a wonderful taste? So we'll see about this one. I'll let you guys know. So I'm super excited in the dead of winter to be thinking about those vine ripe juicy tomatoes dripping down my chin in the garden. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys real quick how I labeled. I used this little duct tape and I just fold it over. And then I use a Sharpie marker to write what kind of seed it is. And I stick it on the edge of my seedling trays, as you can see. And I find out that when I put these in the sun, when it gets a little sunshine on a day, that these don't fade. They stay on there and you don't have big markers sticking everywhere. But that's just how I do mine. How do you do yours? Leave it in the comments. I keep my seed starting center under my china hutch. Hold on, buddy. Go this way. Okay, first try and, try and heat mat. The dreams of summer can officially begin. <laughs> Okay. 